Welcome back everybody. Thanks for joining me. Just Mike here and today we have a very heavy clock to work on and I don't know if this is a name because there's not a name on the face but this piece of paper says it's a Marty French Victorian brass clock and I've been kind of wanting one of these and they normally go really high well thanks to Mark I found this one reasonable as far as I'm concerned anyway let me show you the clock this is the clock and it didn't fare well being shipped normally they wrap these really nice they've left the pendulum banging around in there the outside was protected quite well but now I see that the movement is popped off the frame so I got to check all of this out I don't know if this even opens it does have the knob there I'm going to say it doesn't well it's got to because there's the uh, where you wind it but this clock has a chip in this beveled glass and before I do anything I think I'm going to go ahead and weigh this clock to show you how heavy this thing is there's a scale and it's let's see let's go pounds there's our pounds so zero we're almost 11 pounds so this d clock does have the mercury weights I don't know how much mercury it is that looks froze up they're just a dot but it does rest on top and no I don't know that much about these clocks but I do know the mercury weight ones seem to be uh, a little bit more valuable we have this which I don't know what it goes to yet have the key looks a little well it is worn but it's a uh, split and then there's this key it says 75 on it and then we have broken glass in here from I'm sure it's that chip and here's the minute hand to that and there was a tapered pin in there by the looks of it but that's not there now uh, like I say it does have the glass around let me see if I like I said the movements falling out so let me see if I can figure this out and possibly get it out so it doesn't fall the rest of the way so it has this door that opens up and also on the back and it'll open better once this glass is cleaned up like I say this here movement is falling out and so I'll be back after I figure it out on how to get it out of here safely but I have a feeling I'll be taking this off so I can just bring it on through even because of the poor shipping this clock still has the value of what I paid for it you can tell in the shipping this here is porcelain and this got chipped up there's it looks like a new chip there a new chip there and this is broke up a little bit and this had the screw in on the bottom and which because it started falling out is bent now I have to straighten that up and the way this goes in there's a peg over here and a peg over here you slide this face behind the pegs and then you screw it in from the bottom to hold this in place so this probably had a pretty big jar to pop out of those and the screw 
it bent, but it held it from falling the rest of the way down. I'm not saying that this stuff probably beat the heck out of this clock during shipping from wherever it came from. And I do have the, I'm going to call it the washer that goes on here after you have the minute hand on. So let me get the glass cleaned up, change my towel because it's got the glass on it and it was dirty from the last one, but I knew I was going to get this dirty. So let me get this cleaned up and we'll get right back to possibly taking this thing apart or seeing if it even runs. Oh, oop. yeah, that glass face is a little bit loose. Anyway, This is odd to me again. Let me show you a close up of this. So when this rocks back and forth, it has a pin here and a pin on the other side that actually runs this thing, I guess we'll say that there ticks back and forth compared to your other ones just right off of here is where they usually have the parts that catch into that their gear and as you can see it has taper pins all on here uh, our number here is a 4755 and this is 411 and this is made in France I'm going to pull this pin out because there's an emblem or deal in there that tells you maybe a little bit about this clock and this is right in the way. I don't know how well you can see that. I don't know if I can get a light on it better. Looking at the back of this getting ready to do whatever i've found another number here and it says 53. try to get that reflect there you go so this might be a 53 like i say i don't know anything about it i found where this piece came from Like I say, that thing's been banging around in there pretty good, so I have to be careful as I'm tightening that to make sure everything's fitting in good. But like I say, the, this mercury's been setting so long, it's kind of discolored in one area. I got it all shook down to the lower part here. And it's supposed to be, of course, like this. I wish I'd get there and clean it, but I'm not pouring that stuff out. I don't think I can pour it out anyway because it looks like it's uh, sealed tubes. Well, on this clock, I know it does work when it comes to the gong. There's a the half hour. There's the hour. And this thing was fully wound, but I can't get it to tick on its own. And so that's pretty much telling me, besides it probably needs oil, I'm going to be cleaning these barrels on this clock also, which is more of a difficult one because it looks like it's got a tall, we'll say, or a wide spring and those barrels are small but we'll get her one way or another so the first thing I'm gonna do not even taking pictures yet but I'm gonna take this dial off which has a taper pin 
there's one, two, three taper pins, and there's gears and whatnot in there too, so let me get those out and we'll take a look at this. I'm going to take the minute hand off. There's where you set your speed. And there's the front of it. So when it comes to taking this movement apart, you have to decide which way you need to take the pictures, which right here are the pins to hold the plate on. So I've decided I'm going to take the pictures this way also, so that way everything can look like it's supposed to with the pictures. This front stuff here can go on either later after it's all put back together which is normal but we'll go ahead and take all this front stuff off first and then we'll hook my fancy dancy feet up which you can use a dish at once you have all this off but what I'm looking for when I put put these on it'll set up like this with the I'll probably have three feet on here instead of the four and that way it's gonna hold up from this part here and so I can take this plate off hopefully keep the gears into place and then that way I can get a top view picture to see how the gears go also so that's one key to help you besides looking through this way and see where the gears are. Don't forget you need close pictures. You need pictures that have enough light, which if you have a flash on your phone or whatever camera or whatever you're using, use it so it'll be brighter in there so you can see what's going on. Also for things such as, this is no biggie, but taking a picture, close picture of this, so you can see just how it popped on, paying attention to what's causing it to do whatever. There is a peg right there, so that's one thing I need to pay attention to, in which that peg is to stop this from going any further down when it gongs. So anyway, let me get pulling these pins and... What I'm going to do is, as I'm pulling the pins, I'll probably take some pictures of, as, of, of it as necessary so I can make sure to get it all together, but usually this is pretty simple. Before I pull the pins, I'm going to let this down because I know both of those are wound up all the way. When taking pictures, when you see something odd that you're not used to seeing, unless this is your first one, and I'd hate this one to be your first one, but just the same. Here we have a, a spring wire that's holding on to here. And that's something to take a picture of for your memory to know where that wire, spring wire there goes. And anything else you see odd, make sure to get a specific picture of that. I don't know if I can do this with my legs on, but I do have stuff underneath there. And hopefully you guys can see. Actually, I don't need the screwdriver. I can push on this once I open this up. 
There we go. We got that wound down. I usually go a little bit further. So hopefully no pressures on this. It's going to cause anything to move. This one, I probably can't get my finger in there. So I'm going to use my screwdriver to push it. There we go. Now that we have all the pressure off, now we can start taking things apart. Loosen them with my bigger screwdriver that just fits into the slot. Now we can use my smaller screwdriver that has a little bit of magnetism to it. I'm not saying that helps, but sometimes it does. You can pretty much tell this is what I guess we'll call it well built. It's got a little peg there. So it holds it in place also. I just noticed that. This one does not. So that's another key thing you need to pay attention to. When you're putting this back together again. Look for those special features. Like that there. So you don't throw it on this side. And wonder why doesn't it lay straight. So both of these are showing that they both wind the same way. So that's another special note you should take. Some of them, one, wind, one, one winds one way and the other, the other way. Flat on the bottom and you have the groove here. So that's another note you should take. Even though it shouldn't matter because these are supposed to be only wound one way. I almost thought I saw some cracks in there, but that's just so besides oil all over there that someone tried to get it going. It looked like cracks on here. That's just di discoloration. Don't have a washer holding this all in. Possibly this is. I wouldn't think that either. Here it's got the pegs on it. And this. So this is so odd to me. I'm used to working on cuckoo clocks and here we have something just totally different. So this is a smooth spiral. And so I'm going to guess what it is, is when the clock is ready to gong on the hour, because of this taper, it's a really fine adjustment to get it to gong on the right hour. So that's going to be something new for me. There's something new.
And I'm going to say this doesn't come off. It's got a cutaway here showing the pin that comes up here. We'll have to take a look at this a little bit later if we have to take that off. So let's take this pin, taper pin, this taper pin, this taper pin out and see what's going on there. So now this one will come off and it has a cap on it by the way that you'd normally find on the hands of your clock. It's coned. This I can feel has got a spring in it. I can feel this has got a spring in it. Let's look real quick. Okay, this spring wire here pushes on this rod across here. It goes up to this, and that's what's giving it its spring. So when we pop it off, we're probably going to have to wind it up, let's say, when we go to put this back on. got the square hole in it when you're taking this stuff off too because I've failed on a few other ones look and see if there's a washer or anything else that's holding it up off the plate or what have you that might help you also okay this spring wire here comes down for there I'm gonna get an extra picture for that See, that one does the gong. And this other spring wire is the one that went to the shaft we just took off. So I need to definitely get a double close-up of that with my camera. One spring wire. Unbelievable how it's screwed in there. So I'm going to say this clock is showing its value by these special details. Not just a slap bam one. And okay, that's still in there. That's good. Now let's pull this pin and I don't know if I can lift that up yet or not because that gears on there because underneath here you'll see I don't know if you can see it or not there's pins in there and that's telling the clock whether it's a half hour or hours what that trigger there is I don't know how recent this was but I can see someone scratched an X here, here, and one there, and one right in between here. And I don't doubt those are new bushings put in here. How long ago, don't know. Don't know the history of the clock. But, and I just wiggled each one of those and they seem to be tight. So that's a plus for me. So I'm just going to leave this the way it is. I'm going to move these feet around to the other side of this. And then we'll start pulling these pins. And more than likely we're going to pull this screw out here so we can get this off for the pendulum. Just to let you know, I consider this an overwhelming clock because of the layers 
that we've taken off so far and knowing what we have down here and all the special levers and whatnot and so I'd suggest everything you took off on the outside including these pins here to keep the plates together I would put it in one dish your next dish is for once you take this apart then we can set these gears in there and also once we have this apart or the plate off we're going to pay special attention to both the winders because we want to see if the winders are the same size or if they're one's a little bit bigger than the other normally your side that has the gong would be the bigger one but we'll see so we have the pins out let's see if we can get this thing apart easily enough or not trying to keep the gears down in there hopefully they're stain I think they are so I don't know if you can see all these scratches normally that is from putting new bushings in Some of these scratches, I don't even know why they're there, to tell you the truth. That one there is a bushing. That's a bushing. There's some things on here, there isn't anything on the other side. Anyway, here we go with our gears. So this is where you'll want to take a picture straight down and not the plates off. You have more light even though you had a flash and take a look on to the inside. Now on this winder, they marked it S and this one, there's some scratches on it, but I don't know if those are scratches that are trying to tell us something or not but we're going to pay attention to which side they came off of that might be a T there it's hard telling we'll know that the S will be on the right side though so let me get some pictures of this and then I'll take this apart with you let's go for it the easiest one is the fan that slows down the gong and it's nice to know because of the shape it's been cut out so I can pass other gears and not hang up on them this here is the one that will catch onto the gear uh, so it'll stop That's the gong. A lot of grease in there. So that's the help stop the wear. These are actually pretty clean. Another warning pin. Okay, this is marked 53 on there. Let's pull the small one out first. This has a heavy oil look to it. Down inside. Not necessarily on the sides 
Although this is discolored a bit from the oil. And you see that color on my finger from the oil that's just kind of drenched on here. It almost tells me that this clock was oiled and able to run. Just that possibly the springs inside need cleaned real bad. This is marked 53 also, so I would think that both springs are the same. The other thing you look for is the shaft, how high that there is. Both of them look the same there also. Because sometimes, depending on the clock, these could be a little bit longer because it has to set up different. And this is going to probably be stained so far. It goes to the hour hand or whatever. And I don't mind it stained. It just makes it easier not to have to pressure fit anything. So the reason why this gear doesn't want to come out is because it has this little flag-like thing. And I didn't pay attention, but I've got the watch to see if that hits one of these levers. So I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to worry about taking that off. And normally I'd take this stuff off, but I don't think I'm going to be cleaning this plate. I'm going to clean it in the clock cleaner, scrub it with Dawn dishwashing soap after that, and a toothbrush. But I don't think I'm going to try shining this up. Mainly because this is the face side where this plate here, I might be taking those off. We'll see. But this is a plate that's really going to show off. And you'll want to shine that one up because it is a totally glass box. So let's just look. Right there is a the rivet that holds the spring, and it's almost directly across is the hole. A lot of people worry about where that's located, and I don't think it really makes a difference. It's just idea you need to get it back in here. Let's take a look at this one too. There's the there's the pin. And almost directly across you have that again. And so when I reinstall these, I'll almost directly right across install them back, this plate back to where it is. So to get them apart, I'm not ready yet, as in taking the spring out, but I'm going to take this out and I'll use my screwdriver and I'm going to pop it here. You can use the end of your screwdrivers, hard plastic. You can use a piece of wood or whatever. And all you're doing is hitting this in, and this should pop this plate off. One hit. There we go. I don't normally like taking these off till I get the spring out, as it helps me. And that spring, and I'm going to say it looks like it's been oiled it looks really oily down below so I'm not sure why this clock wouldn't tick that's pretty oily too in fact you can see it's drenched on there so just to show you I'm gonna take these apart all the way I get my leather gloves on just safer and what I normally do is I'll grab this and hopefully it stays in there Otherwise, you might have to use your needle nose or something. Gets holding on to the spring now. And I start pulling it out to where I can grab a hold of it. This is coming out really easy, so it's well oiled. And 
What you do is you kind of wind it up, trying to shrink that spring back in. And don't tell me it's stuck now. And I need to kind of push it in to get it to release. It says 53 inside here too. And there's your spring. Besides really oiled. Doesn't look that bit that bad. But I'm still gonna clean this in the sonic cleaner. Then I'm gonna rinse off hot water. I'm going to use WD-40 on this, and I'll show you, uh, just real quick like, and then you have to get that WD-40 off because it's an acid also, that's why it cleans so well, and then I'll use denatured alcohol to wipe down the spring, and then I'll put it back in here, and that's when I'm going to re-oil this. Now I did want to mention also, I think this clock lost the spring, broke the spring or whatever. This one's blue and this one I would say is the older one is because it doesn't have its blue anymore. get the thin part way and it's just about ready to go in but there it went in the rivet into the spring the hardest part is getting around one full circle because you have to get over the spring where the rivet is and I just keep circling this in there until it's in you give it a little bit of a twist and you see how it wants to go in and then you push it and hold it down with this thumb here 
I'm holding this gear so or the barrel so it doesn't want to take off on you. Push with a twist, keep pushing down with that thumb there, and get this thumb to hold it. Now you can oil this. I use a toothpick and dip it into the clock oil. And then I put a few drops on there and it should be fine. I'll go ahead and do this one. My gloves off. And that should be about good. If you ever get confused on if you forget which way that spring's supposed to be in, this here key winder part that goes in, you look at where the grab is on here. And it's going to be grabbing, so it has to be turning this away. This is another nice thing to do is test it to see if it's going to grab. Otherwise, you might have to bend the inner spring down there around a little bit more so it can catch. This one goes in all the way. They look the same, but this one here does not want to go in all the way. They looked exactly the same, but right now it's held and it's sticking out. That's what you need is it's sticking out a little bit. So what I do now, kind of like they did, there's a, the rivet, there's the divot in there. I'll set this on here. Now if you got a vise without the teeth, uh, sharp teeth, or you put a block of wood in there, you can press this shut. If you don't have such an animal, what I do is I'll stick it on the edge of my desk. I try to get this one in here. So now it seems to be in there pretty good. And just in case maybe it's a little bit different, we'll find out after I get this spring in and we'll put this one on. So here's just showing I got the plate clean. The both the springs are in now. The these uh, lids or whatever you call them weren't a problem because they're the same and I was just kind of wondering about that. So those are installed. Now I need to get my now I need to get my other gears and get them scrubbed down and we'll dry them off and put them in here. And then of course we still have these that go on the outside that haven't been washed or anything yet.
So before I start putting all these levers on, I'm going to go ahead and oil this because I can see all the bushings right now where they need to be oiled, where if I was to put all this on, most of them would be covered up. So this is what we have left to put on the clock. And I kept them separate so that way it would be, we'll say, so confusing. And realistically, if you've done enough clocks, yes, let's just say I got worried because you had that and all that. And then the face on top of that. But realistically, it's not that bad. But it doesn't hurt to separate all your pieces. And even when I do the cuckoo clocks, all the front pieces or the outside pieces of the movement I usually keep separate so that way it isn't as confusing even though they're not that bad either just the timing also this key I don't know that it goes to this clock but it's not going to stay with the clock because it is broken and I don't want this broken part, let's see, does it fit this clock? It does fit on the clock, but I noticed on the shafts, they're starting to round a little bit, and that's not a good thing, because if they get too bad, you either have to replace these or file both of them down to fit the next size key. And that's not what I want to do. This here key fits. And I'm pretty sure it's meant for it. Because this end. Let's see. It's right here. This is what changes the speed of the clock. It fits in there. And it's nice and tight. So this one will be with the clock all the time. So on the back side of these part of the clicker. I'm going to put just a little bit of grease. This one's not too bad, but I've noticed it's really starting to starting to wear on there. And so that tells me that it's got a little bit of drag and the only, the only drag you're really having is when you wind the clock. This is the one with a single pin.
So on this movement, I didn't know, and then I watched another guy's video. This gear here has a timing mark. And as you can see, it's a little dot right there. And that needs to be lined up with the one on here to start off with. So I disconnected this so I can take this out of the way. And we'll move this around, maybe. And line these two dots up. Let me get this in place, kind of. No, it's not right yet. Now I have that dot and that dot lined up. And now this wheel with the snail has got a dot. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's right there. You're supposed to line these up. And so now we have a dot on the inner wheel. This wheel here, it's right there. And on this snail, it's right there. And that's how you time your clock. So when it's supposed to bong, it knows because it's in perfect match here. So now I have to put this, keep this from turning, put this back on. Now it's in time. N no, I didn't unwind it. This is why it's going. But like I say, now this knows where to go. And you saw this, this was able to climb that before it's time, we'll say. So it's nice getting this clock going again. And for me, I only worked on this for today only. And I was able to get it running, clean, oiled and running. And so very happy with the clock. Very disappointed on the way they wrapped it because normally they really get carried away from the place I'm ordering now with the bubble wrap and whatnot. And they kind of failed this time. It's sad because now the bevel glass has a chip out of the one corner and does have a few scratches and the porcelain dial did chip a little bit. Most of that you won't notice except maybe the broken glass on the corner. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Oh, by the way, subscription is free today. So go for it, and until next time, God bless.